Ben Seitz, we usually see him in super modified competition, driving the Sewell Racing number 32 machine. Uh, he ran for a couple of different teams in the past couple of years, but now he finds his way back to NEMA. And uh, Ben Seitz, multi-time NEMA champion, like we said, he and Pete Valeri were so dominant for so many years, and then they decided to go super modified racing. They won a championship in the International Super Modified Association, and. Uh, Right now, Ben's been bouncing around from ride to ride, but it's really nice to see him back in a midget. Well, you talk about Randy Cabral out there in the number 74, the defending champion of the NEMA midgets. As a matter of fact, uh, Randy has won a lot of championships, and uh, he is usually a multi-time winner every season, but uh, a six-time champion of NEMA. In fact, um, he actually has won seven out of the last 11 championships with NEMA, including last season, but he is winless so far in 2019. That is uncharacteristic of Randy Cabral in that number 74. He's the winningest driver or the of the current history of NEMA. Let's see what he can do tonight when they get going like right now as the green flag comes out on the NEMA midgets. We're underway for their 25 lap feature. And right now, Mike Horn tries to get the advantage going in the corner. Zick tries to get underneath him, but Horn won't have anything about it. He comes around him on the outside. Yeah, Mike Horn got a great run out of turn two and got back around John Zick on the backstretch. Horn just a little loose out of that turn four, and John Zick trying to take advantage of it down on the bottom. Great battle going into turn number one, and we've got one car blowing a little bit of smoke out there. Zick loses the handle on the car. He slides it off of turn two, and he'll lose some ground to Mike Horn. Yeah, he lost a lot of ground to Mike Horn, and that allowed the 48 of Todd Bertrand to catch him. Oh, trouble. We've got the number 17 of Seitz having some trouble down the front straightaway. It looks like some uh, mechanical woes, some engine problems, and it might be some oil coming out the back of that car because we saw him slipping and sliding as he was through the corner. Boy, he was fast in his heat tonight, too. Uh, that's a tough one for the 17. Yeah, we can see some fluid actually from our camera angle dripping out the back end of the race car. So a tough break for Ben Seitz in that number 17 machine. Well, I got to think also, uh, Derek, these engines are wound up so tight. Uh, <laughs> and to, to uh, be on the throttle basically uh, almost constantly around this racetrack puts a lot of wear and tear on these engines. Well, you know, it was funny because I was talking to modified tour champion Justin Bonsignor because he actually won a NEMA race at Riverhead Raceway one time, and I asked him what, you know, he thought of the midgets. <laughs> and he said, uh, well, those engines are ticking time bombs <laughs> because they run 14 to 1 compression engines, basically the same thing that a NASCAR wheel and modified tour runs for uh, a compression in their engines, but they are four-cylinder motors they are spinning so high in rpm almost breaking 10,000 rpms and uh yeah you you're really pushing the limits of these these motors because you're out here on a track like the thompson speedway motorsports park where you have that high sustained rpm all race long and uh, we see that uh, one guy got in trouble with what fluid may have been dropped on the racetrack andy lunt in the number 18, the Stargate-sponsored entry. Andy, who uh, is in his first full season with the NEMA Midgets, a great crew of guys that uh, run that car. And uh, Andy, who started on the pole tonight, unfortunately having to get a push to get restarted. And you can see how much speedy drive they've had to put down on the racetrack already, dropped by Ben Seitz, number 17. Yeah, a lot of fluid was definitely dropped out there on the racetrack, a tough break for him. Luckily, Andy Lunt did not uh, get into the wall or contact with anyone else. He just spun the car, and that was a good sign to see. A uh, tough break for Ben Seitz, as we can see him getting pushed back to the pit area. And you were talking about the engines in these cars, Derek, uh, four-cylinder, but not what we're used to when it comes to a four-cylinder. I mean, this is basically half of a, of a you know, an eight-cylinder engine plopped right into these cars. Well, that's exactly what the Gertie engines are that are in these cars. They're actually a V8 cut in half. They just take a half of a block from a Gertie sprint car engine, and that's what they go with. The other engines, like the Esslinger motor, the Esslinger engine is the overhead cam replica, the all-aluminum replica of the Ford 2300 Pinto engine. So uh, it does have its origins with a, fo with a, a Ford origin, but uh, still uh, really high horsepower engines, both of them very effective for this type of racing. Now, you've driven these cars at this racetrack. Uh, tell us about 
the use of the throttle and the brake on a track like this? Well, at a place like Thompson, you really don't use much brake around this place because you just you just really sail it off into the corner. You roll out of it and kind of let it roll on through. You try to roll the top basically and keep the RPMs up, keep your foot in the throttle all the way around here. And there are some guys that have actually been able to, to go flat footing into the, into the corners here. Well, and uh, turn in some speed too. So uh, you got to, at least here at Thompson, you got a little time to think about it going down the straightaway compared to some of those uh, tight quarter miles that these guys run at. But still, that's, a, that's an amazing amount of speed by the time you get the end of the straightaway and the, uh, the closing rate is uh, unbelievable if you're coming up on a slower car. Oh yeah, I mean, it, you, the straightaways here are long. You definitely have time to think about it, but the, the wild part is too, with these midgets, with the open cockpit, with the wind blowing your hair around, and as fast as you're going, believe it or not, the, the, the back straightaway wall, it, it gets blurry at about 130, 140 miles an hour. I, I believe it for sure. Um, as we get them uh, doubled up side by side for the restart, the signal from uh, Craig Merriman on the flag stand is that we'll turn them loose next time. We've got two laps complete out of the 25 lap NEMA main event. Mike Horn got out to an early lead. John Zick was giving him a challenge, but Zick may be uh, fighting some handling with that race car. We saw him lose a little grip out there and allow Mike Horn to get away. So we'll find out when we get back under green, which is uh, coming momentarily as they work slowly into turn number three. And the green flag goes in the air. We're back underway. Horn with the advantage once again, going down the front straightaway, but Todd Bertrand just bottom feeding on the bottom, trying to hook it, does not make it, and Horn comes out on top with the lead. Yeah, Mike Horn will lead him down the back stretch. Todd Bertrand has been fast all day, basically, fast out of the truck today as uh, he elected uh, only one practice uh, earlier today and found that he had a whole lot of speed and was satisfied with that and he's showing it now as he's trying to reel in Mike Horn on the back stretch. And he went by him like he was tied to a post. That car shows a heck of a lot of speed out there, especially some straightaway speed. Todd Bertrand has the advantage and he's opening the gap going into one. Another good battle is between John Zick and Paul Scally, that is back uh, for the fifth spot. Zick has it right now in the number nine, but being challenged by Scally, a heat winner in the number 30. Car starting to spread out around the track, a little deeper in the field. Sammy Swindell and Bethany Storr going at it very much like they did in their heat race earlier in the day today. Uh, right now, Swindell has the advantage, but here comes the youngster, Jake Trainer, just 14 years old, creeping into the action. Yeah, Jake Trainer in the first time in that race car, and he's given it a good run here for the Pernasiglio family in the number 50, as those three cars pretty much run together. Swindell, the five of Bethany Store, and Jake Trainer in the number 50. Meanwhile, the leader has uh, checked out in uh, Todd Bertrand clipping off some pretty fast laps in that number 48. His teammate has moved it up, moved it up to second. That's Avery Store in the number 39. Avery in a comfortable second. They're all spread out now pretty much. Mike Horn all by himself in third. Randy Cabral is fourth. John Zick in the number nine is fifth. But boy, he is loose all over the racetrack. And because he gets so loose, he gives it up to uh, Paul Scally and now actually slows to the bottom of the racetrack. Drinan cars in the first six positions out there on the racetrack that finds Todd Bertrand out in front. Avery Store second, third. Well, it's pretty much a Bertrand car. It's kind of a quasi team to the Bertrands. The A1 of Mike Horn, they do a lot of work with Mike Horn and uh, he's running a pretty solid race right now in the four, in the third spot. Yeah, you wouldn't think so after talking to him during practice today. He just felt he did not have it with that race car, but he's got a pretty good run going on now, running third, but about to come under attack by Randy Cabral in the number 74. John Zick has pulled off, so evidently the handling problems are enough that he elected not to continue, so the number nine is on pit road. Battle down the back straightaway, going into turn number three, Randy Cabral to the inside of Mike Horn. They are wheel to wheel coming off the corner, and right now they're gonna drag race down the front stretch into turn one, and 
Cabral has got the advantage on the bottom, and he'll take that spot away. Yeah, Randy Cabral up to third, so now we've got the Bertrand cars at first, second, and third, meaning Todd Bertrand in front. He's got almost a straightaway over his teammate, Avery Storr, in the th number 39. Then you've got to go back several car lengths to get to Randy Cabral in the 74. They are the top three, followed by Jeff Horn in the A1, and then Paul Scally in the number 30. Todd Bertrand continues to put another lap up on the board. We are halfway completed with this 25 lap main event. And right now he sees some trouble down the back straightaway. Todd Bertrand slows a huge problem for him. Looks like he's gonna have some mechanical problems, a heartbreak for Bertrand as he drops out while leading. Yeah, we talked a little while ago about uh, the uh, stress on the power plants of these cars on this racetrack. And very well could be the uh, situation for Bertrand, a tough one. And look at the youngster Jake Trainer working on the master Sammy Swindell. Can you believe it? They are fighting for the eighth spot out there. Yeah, you think they were fighting for the lead the way they're going at it. Uh, Jake Trainer all over the back bumper of Swindell's number 47. Meanwhile, on pit road, we watch uh, Todd Bertrand climb out very dejected, giving up a big lead that he had, and his night is done. But he gave up the lead to one of his teammates. Gave up the lead to one of the teammates. The Bertrand team is out in front right now, but we've got cars spaced all the way around the track, and the battle right now is for the seventh position between Sammy Swindell, who is a master of everything that he's run, and a 14-year-old kid named Jake Trainer. Yeah, that's a, Jake's given it a great run. He's tried Sammy on the outside, the inside. Now we'll go to the inside in that number 50 and race him down into turn three. Let's see if he can make it stick. Sammy, of course, uh, knows how to come back on the outside, but he's going to try the inside of Jake Trainer. That, as you said, the best race on the racetrack. And look at the Pernasiglio family down there on pit road, jumping and cheering. They have their youngster, Jake Trainer, out there basically walking the dog on a two-time World of Outlaw champion. Yeah, for sure, and he's not <laughs> only passed him, he's pulled away for sure. Now, up front, the leader is Avery Storr in the number 39. He's just working the uh, first and second turn right now, and you've gotta go almost a half a straightaway back to Randy Cabral, who's in second. So they are spread out all over the place and turning in some big speed with only five laps to go. Boy, there's some happy crew members down there on pit road right now watching some of their cars circle this track up front. And one of them is the Cabral team. They're running out in front right now, but also a big, huge shot in the arm to the number 50, the Pernasiglio team, as they are putting on a great run out there. Yeah, uh, Lance and Fenoro, the of the great Fenoro racing family is the usual driver of that car. He better watch out because Jake Trainer is showing some stuff tonight. He definitely is. Jake Trainer, a very talented young race car driver. He's actually won NEMA light races before, won a 50 lapper at the Waterford Speed Bowl. Did an incredible job there earlier this year, but check it out. Pete, we have only three more laps to go. Yeah, and uh, Avery Storr is well in command as he continues to fly around here at unbelievable speeds in that number 39. He is the leader. Randy Cabral, try as he might, just can't seem to uh, reel him in. Pretty good battle between Mike Horn and Paul Scally right now. That is the race for third and fourth as they find themselves racing down the backstretch, but time is running out. Two laps to go for our leader, Avery Storr. Two more laps to go. Avery Storr, like you said, out in front right now. Avery Storr, a third generation racer. His father, Russ Storr, a multi-time NEMA champion. His grandfather, Paul Storr, a longtime competitor in the Northeastern Midget Association. So here comes Avery Storr to take the checkered flag. Yeah, Storr the winner. Randy Cabral will be second. Third will be Paul Scally, who got around the A1 of Mike Horn, for, and Horn will finish in the fourth spot. And then we've got uh, the rest of the field coming on through. We'll uh, be talking to our winner, Avery Storr, trackside. So the checkered flag falls here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park, and Avery Storr, the son of Russ Storr, a six-time NEMA champion, picks up the win here tonight. Avery Storr has also 
won the prestigious Boston Louis Seymour Memorial earlier this year at the Seekonk Speedway. He is driving for the Bertrand team. And it was a pretty good night for the Bertrand team, finishing one and two here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park in the Marvin Rifkin Memorial as the Thompson Speedway Motorsports staff gets ready to bring the Critical Signs Victory Lane banner out for your winner tonight in the Bertrand Motorsports KNN Air Filter, sponsored number 39. There he is, climbing out of the car. Up on the wing, it's Avery Store. So as it stands right now, Avery Store picks up the win. Second was Randy Cabral. Third was Paul Scally. Fourth was Mike Horn. Fifth, Bethany Store. How about Jake Trainer coming home in the sixth spot in the Pernasiglio team? Seventh is Sammy Swindell. Eighth is Andy Lunt. Ninth is Jeff Champagne. And rounding out the top ten will be Todd Bertrand. Pete Falcone, the voice of the Northeastern Midget Association, is down in victory lane. Pete, let's throw it downstairs to you with tonight's main event winner. A lot of happy people down here in victory lane, and among them is uh, Avery Storr, who was uh, basically on rails tonight. Tell us about this win. Oh, I've been since... One of the first times I got in a midget, I got an Eddie Bros car here. We got a heat race win. I got to lead some laps and it didn't work out. And this place has been a thorn in my side ever since. I really can't even put into words how much it means for me to win here. I absolutely love this track. I love coming here. I love Thompson for having us. I love all the fans for coming out. It's just an absolutely awesome night. Doesn't hurt your point lead either. That doesn't hurt that either. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Avery Stores in Victory Lane brings uh, Bertrand Motorsports another win here at the Thompson Speedway. And he does it in fine fashion, flying around here in the number 39 to pick up the NEMA main event.